predict. No, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Oh, okay. I'm not going to predict. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Okay. I already know what's going to happen. The one with so the most electoral no, votes will win. win. Yeah. No, I don't really count anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen people win the popular and lose electoral. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Right? And you've got a whole lot of stock you might need to play. No, if you find up in some of it. I'm just gonna tell you is it's gonna be so dependable when I tell you Sunday morning you can set your clock by. It's gonna cause them a lot of nerves. Because right now there's something called ETSD, election trauma. I mean it's a post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, it's election trauma stress disorder. And people are really, really messing up. They just don't know what to do. There, there's so many people. They're fighting each other. And Hillary says, let's talk about the issues. But she's constantly talking about him. And he says, let's talk about the issues. But he's constantly talking about her. It's been the biggest mudslinging. And we got two candidates nobody likes. I don't know how we got two candidates with such high disapproval rates. It makes no sense. How do we do this? I know the Democrats, I mean, from what we've seen, and with those WikiLeaks things, this is who they wanted. Okay, it's who they wanted. And we all know that Democrats are up because that's not who they want. <laughs> so, so, I don't know how that happened. So, but I did, one, of the Wiki, one of the WikiLeaks did say, uh, she was quoted as saying, I hope, and, and we're going to try, we hope that we have to go against Donald Trump. Because if we go against Donald Trump, that's how we win, is going against Donald Trump. So they already had it figured out that if they could fight Donald Trump, in the, in the, so I have a feeling uh, they might have been behind some of this too. With the, with the, see, the, the, the media is all for Hillary. And, and so with the, with the media all for Hillary because they're very liberal, then it, like, like this weekend when, when the Republican, right here in North Carolina, when the Republican uh, House or, or election board got burned up and vandalized, if it had been a Democratic House, burn up. Oh, we'd have been we'd have been demonized. But just, oh by the way, this happened. Okay? Everybody, in liberal county in North Carolina, you know Orange County is a little liberal, so Yeah, but what I was gonna say is though if it had been a, if it had been a Democrat, oh yeah. Oh, we'd have been we'd have been in trouble. And it said, you know, all about uh, Trump's people, but I, but I, the media I believe and that somebody predicted this early on, is that the media was gonna help get Trump in in order and he could go against the Democrat, and then they could dump him when he got there. And that's what they did. They dumped him. I mean, they have dumped him like a hot potato. We've never had a presidential elect to be assassinated before inauguration, but. <laughs> well, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, please be careful what you say. Like, I was in the airport the other day, and Linda said we were leaving Boston Airport, and all the other airports we didn't have. I mean, I'm telling you, the man of Robert Bills is very gentle. <laughs> Boston was so different. She said, why is this so different than the rest of the airports? And I said, because of the recent bombings. And she said, I ask you not to say bomb in the airport. And I said, well, you ask me why we have why we're having to do this is because of the Boston bombings and the other stuff. You know, that they're, they're tighter on that. We had to take stuff out of our suitcase. We had to put it, I mean, it was just totally different. You know, had to take your shoes off, take your coat off. It was so different than any other airport in Boston. And and I believe it's because of the Boston. Well, that's actually where one of the 9-11 planes took off from, too. Well, and, and also, you got the, you got the, there's some people coming to do some weird things, like the, the, the underwear bomber. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the shoe bomber. The shoe bomber. And there was a, a few guys on the plane, I wish they'd have kept their shoes on, because they should have checked them. And underwear bomb bomb where he fared rough. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, let's get into this thing. I think they would have been upset if I started undressing right there. So, well, yeah, let's just let's take, let's take it all off. I can tell you what, no, they put you in that scanner yeah. and check you in that scanner. I can tell you this if you go to Washington, D.C., don't play. We went to the Capitol building, I was going in, or we went to the Senate. We were going to go see how the Senate, I was the chaperone for the school. And I went in and I buzzed. And so the guys told me to get back and take my coat off. So I took my coat, this was years ago, so I took my coat off. Come back in, I buzzed again. He said, okay. He said, now, pull everything out your pocket. So I did, I went back in, I buzzed again. And he said, okay, take your belt off. I took my 
development buzz again. He said, okay, well, I don't, we're going to start looking further. And so I went, da, 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 da. <laughs> they didn't think it was funny. I don't know if you remember. It was in my belt buckle. I remember a number of years ago when the guy from Old Eastern kind of drove his tractor up there running into the, in the reflection pool and told me he had a bomb on that. And he did. It was one of them spray booted bombs. <laughs> spray <laughs> wasp. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the seventh day. 